have a few follow-up questions from the pregnancy question that was asked previously. Uh, yes. The questions, two questions <clears throat> that came up a few times. One is, does a baby need carbohydrate to grow in the womb? And the other one is, what is the target A1C of the mother? <laughs> very, very good questions. Um, what you eat when you're pregnant doesn't go directly to the baby. It gets digested in, by the mother, uh, appears in the mother's bloodstream, and it's from the blood that the baby, from the mother's blood that the baby gets nourished. So if the mother has a normal blood sugar, uh, the baby is going to get what amounts to a normal blood sugar through its own veins. It's not going to get it through its mouth. Uh, and uh, as it happens, once uh, the pregnancy is, has proceeded, I believe, uh, beyond the first trimester, the average blood sugar of mothers is, non-diabetic mothers, is about 65 milligrams per deciliter. And they don't feel hypoglycemic. They feel fine at that blood sugar. So that's a healthy blood sugar for mothers and for babies. That's the way it is in the normal non-diabetic world. So whatever you can do to, to maintain that is what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if you had a mother who had uh, uh, some sort of bizarre condition that kept her blood sugars in the 40s, I think that would be dangerous. So she would have to eat more carbohydrate, I guess, uh, or frequent protein meals to get her blood sugars up. Mm -hmm. But that's not the usual problem. The usual problem is that overweight or diabetic mothers usually have high blood sugars, and that's harmful to the fetus. Why now, are, now why? you asked one yeah. more question. Well, I, I forgot it. I asked about A1C, but if the blood sugar is 65, then that's sort of a corresponding normal A1C in the fours, right? Right, right. Why are the doctors giving this advice? Uh, I know that's a tough question, but 40, 50 grams per meal, um, when they know what the complications of a diabetic pregnancy are as far as uh, early delivery and so on. Um, Where does this come my, from? My, well, um, a lot of this comes from the ADA. Uh, and why do doctors follow the ADA? They follow because if something hap bad happens to a patient or to a, uh, a baby, and uh, it resulted from the di doctor's care, but the doctor was following guidelines... The, uh, any lawsuit against the doctor is fruitless. Gotcha. Uh, if he can get an expert witness to say, or several ex expert witnesses say, here are the guidelines. He was following the guidelines. Uh, if the guidelines killed the patient, that's not his fault. Uh, so the legal guideline is that you follow the guidelines. <laughs> okay? Gotcha. It protects the doctors. And of course, there are many people who are ignorant. And uh, there are many people who can't think for themselves, who believe what they're told. Uh, now, I see patients who read nonsense on the internet and believe a lot of uh, mythical things, uh, mythical cures for diabetes and so on. And uh, doctors believe mythical things that guidelines tell them. Mm -hmm. And the most recent uh, widely popularized one was the Department of Agriculture uh, uh, food guidelines. Uh, eat a lot of whole grain bread and fruits. And the base of the food pyramid should be bread. <laughs> you know, yeah. people have been, doctors have been believing this for years and years. Yeah. So um, there may be a few of them who 
uh, adhered to this because uh, they're protected by, by following guidelines, but most of them believe this because they were told it. Right. You know? 